We are back again in your ears and on your screens with the next episode of the Classics in Conversation. Um, I'm joined, as always, by the fantastic Heather, and we have another classic, and ah. it's Reese Bowen Jones. How Hello, you, everybody. Hi. I'm very well, thank you. How are you both? Not Good. So keeping yeah. on, keeping on. Sun mm-hmm. shining. That's a lovely day today, isn't it? You it's so today. nice. Um, mm. I apologise in advance for any like background noise. My neighbours have been renovating for three days, so it's a noisy time. My neighbour sings a lot, so that, that could also be, appear on our episode. <laughs> so. I have had to edit out Mikey like whistling in the background before. I ask him, I'm like, can you not do that? He's like, I'm sorry, I don't realise I'm doing it. <laughs> You, do. you want that fame, that YouTube fame. Yeah, that's what it is. He's trying to mm. piggyback off us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah disgusting. Um, Kim <laughs> coming at us with his like 50k subscribers. I know. Kind of yeah. yeah. I'm a small man. <laughs> Swear to God. We're here today to talk about a particular favourite of mine, as you might be able to tell from my uh, my Walmart cosplay. I love um, it. <laughs> the absolute classic in our Wes Craven double bill, Nightmare on Elm Street. Woo-hoo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'll kick off with the first and most important question. What do you think of the film, guys? Ah, shit. Uh, <laughs> it. See you next time. <laughs> no, it's really good. I really like it. It's one of those kind of my horror film watching history is tragically limited. Um, like everything from before the year 2010 is just absolute nonsense. But I have made it kind of an effort to watch all of the classics like Friday the 13th, Halloween mm-hmm. um, and Elm Street. And the this one is, Yeah, exactly. And this one is by far the best one. It, it's the one that stands the test of time the best out of all of them because like the special effects are still really good. Freddy Krueger is still really scary and weird. And it's just a really, really cool film. And the, like I've only seen the first three of the series, but I really like all three of them. So mm-hmm. I think it's a, yeah, it's a very, very good kind of entrant, entry point into the horror kind of Horror of the eighties, mm. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I like it. Um I most of the things that Reese said, pretty much the same. <laughs> um it's very uh, good at that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's very, very, very well I rounded. Blag. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't actually know when I watched it, like the first time. Um I could remember Scream last night so vividly, but I don't mm-hmm. remember when I watched this. Um, but I would imagine it had been later on. Um, as we said in the last episode, I started with way more like contemporary horror, um, not being a child of the eighties and all. So, um, yeah, I like it. I mean, it's one of those things where I think like he's the character and the concept and like everything around the film. Sorry, I posted there, just fell off my note, it's bored. <laughs> and I had a heart attack. <laughs> he's going for you, man. That's what he's it arrived. Is. I was he's arrived. Like, this is actually a dream. And it like came at me. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, like I feel like the character and the sort of like um, style and the concept of the film was so like synonymous that I'd seen that first. Um, and I'd seen like posters and I'd seen like costumes halloween and that sort of thing um but yeah i like it i enjoyed going back and watching it again mm. what about yeah. you, G? i think it's one of those films the more we talk about it the more i'm like actually this film is absolutely incredible like mm. the more we say about it I, I remember why i love it so much and it's just i mean it's from 1985 in the uk release which in and of itself you know mwah, exactly yeah, yeah. that's like your like is that your favorite sort of like time period in terms of horror yeah like 70s and 80s but mm. in the 80s i think the 70s were like the inception in the 80s you just get such classics and it's an hour and 40 minutes it's everything about it is perfect <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know it's just oh and i think that yeah the more i'm talking about it the more i'm like actually no it is probably one of my favorite horrors mm-hmm. um just for the aesthetic for the concept as well no doubt we'll dive into a little bit of psychology mm-hmm. later yeah, yeah. um <laughs> just everything about it is just fantastic and I think thinking about when we watched it first I obviously had a very big Johnny Depp phase when I was younger so I mean it was the crop top wasn't it yeah you you should see Heather's Instagram messages from me about this film (laughs) 
We'll get on to that later. (laughs) Yes, we will. Um, Yeah, and so I think I watched it as part of that. And then obviously Heather Langenkamp said it, and I was like, wait. (laughs) (laughs) Realising things. (laughs) Yeah, it's just like... (laughs) This choice will have consequences. (laughs) (laughs) And so it did. But yeah, I just think it's fantastic. I mean, Wes Craven does does franchises pretty well, I think. You know, he... uh, we, we did Scream last night, and I think if you, he's got a pretty good track record, that fella. He knows what he's doing, doesn't he? He's got a really good understanding of the genre, I think, more than lots of filmmakers might do, because obviously yeah. he wrote like Scream, which is obviously a very kind of meta look at how horror films work. But he also kind of, when he did New Nightmare, that was one of the first of its time, I think. There was kind yeah. of a very self-referential horror film, and it kind of really played on the tropes. And this is what the, this Elm Street does as well. Like it really plays on the Halloween thing of like the stalker and the night. And uh, but what I do, I think I was thinking about this last night. What I like about Elm Street is how Freddy Krueger is a very much a supernatural villain, whereas mm-hmm. compared to like Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees, they're still kind of based in reality. Like obviously yeah. they've got some kind of weird supernatural elements, but like the way that Michael Myers like escapes and stuff like that. But Freddy Krueger is entirely based on the idea of your dreams and the fact that mm-hmm. he, he attacks you when you're asleep and it's yeah i just like the fact that he does separate himself from like the regular slasher by being such a supernatural one yeah i was thinking about this when i was watching it um because what is freddy i sort of settled on the idea of like a vengeful spirit but like he's dead so, mm-hmm. as you say, he's not like a living, Boy, breathing. <laughs> I mean, come on! It's <laughs> 1984, 85, and there's been like 70 of them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because like obviously he's not like, you know, he's not like a zombie in his little mm-hmm. snazzy hat, is he? So no. I sort of like, because I was thinking about her room, and obviously there's like the cross on the wall, um, which did not did nothing to protect her, bless her. <laughs> um, And I think, like, I'd sort of settled on maybe him being, like, a vengeful spirit. But I don't know. Like, I don't know where you'd class him other than monster. Ooh. I'd go for Triforce. I like it. (laughs) I was like, where where are we going? (laughs) What are we we doing? (laughs) Do it, (laughs) Yeah. I would go for a trifle as maybe vengeful spirit for sure. Mm. Like you said, Mm. he's got an axe to grind or some razor, razor hands to grind. Yeah. Um... And maybe Finger like axes. Dreamwalker slash Tulpa, because a lot Ooh, of people believe yes. in him, thus he's able to manifest. Yes, nice. Maybe Tulpa's a good shout. Sorry, Riz, I have Tulpa? a Sorry. I have a lot of free time, so I'm doing a lot of. <laughs> have you ever seen Supernatural? Uh, I've seen the first like series of it, and I was like, I get the the whole premise of it, and I stopped watching. I apologize. I know. I mean, right, the audio is right. out and like, he's gone <laughs> forever. Unfortunately, he was going through a tunnel, so we had to like <laughs> hang up. Um, we'll so, get more. It was one of those shows. I'm not to get into a supernatural tangent. We can do right. that. It's fine. Carry on. But I, I remember I at, when I was back in like the old Tumblr days. That was everywhere. Like super hulock was super? the whole thing. <laughs> and I remember people saying how Castiel was this amazing character. So I thought I'm going to watch it to get to Castiel. But I never got around to it all the way. Exactly. And there's four series of 24 episodes, but all really follow the same structure. Yeah. Area. But I mean, like, not uh, to be like, I think mine and G's opinions differ on it, but those early ones are the best ones. Really? Yeah. I would always say, I mean, I love it more than I love Formula. Like, I, I love Monster that. of the Week. Yeah. And I always say, if you're going to start watching it, stop at season five or six, because okay. it goes up to 15 and they're all like, <laughs> mm-hmm. But the point stands. So Tulpa <laughs> is basically yeah. a a myth or a legend that if enough people believe in, it can then manifest. Um, that's a very, yeah. very basic version of it. There's loads mm-hmm. of folklore yeah. from different regions. So one could argue that he, you know, has that kind of cult of the Freddy Krueger. People start to believe in him, and thus he's able to manifest, potentially. Mm-hmm. But he's in dreams, so who knows? Yeah, and I don't know. I mean, I love the Tulpa concept that you're going for, but he's, mm. I think, I don't know. He's definitely like born out of a crime, mm. but then he's like also committed a crime. So he's yeah. not like an innocent bystander. So they're normally like mm. what comes after having been so badly wronged. Mm. Yeah. I get it. He's, a, I get... he's a little fashionista, is what he is. <laughs> you say that because you're wearing his range of clothing. Mm-hmm. I didn't have the hat, unfortunately. This is Freddy 2020. <laughs> their spring range. 
<laughs> well, I guess you could kind of argue that the first in the first film, especially, he's out to kind of get revenge on the one who killed him, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. he's Boilers, almost like um, a manifestation of the parents' guilt. Yes, mm. it's actually nothing to do with the kids because they mm. were responsible. Mm weren't they? Yeah. So. Well, I was reading about this actually this mm. week when I was doing some research and how... Oh, we love that. Yeah, just I thought I'd get prepared, you know? Um, and I remember, Such I think I read... Yeah, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> the traits stay with me. Um, but it was kind of, people were saying how the parents in the film, they're all kind of fuck-ups. Mm. Like they're all like alcoholics and they all kind of yeah. just they, yeah. don't, they neglect <clears throat> their kids and they're all kind of trying to keep them kind of too kind of safe at home. They would not let them mm. be kids and it's kind of that kind of so the kids really are just unfortunate bystanders in their parents' yeah. own mistakes, I guess. Definitely. And I think mm. like um they're in more danger from having been so tightly held and like um shielded and you know attempted to be like kept controlled and absolutely bars and mm. windows. And all right, like kids can be kids, like they're always going to like, we said this about Scream, like I think at that sort of high school age, like you should think that you know everything and you should make some mistakes that, you know, mm. you can like learn from or whatever. But um, I definitely think you're right. Like the parents are almost like just bigger teenagers. Like she's there with it, like Margarita Mix, which I'm, I refuse to believe was like a bottle of vodka. I was like, that's just Margarita <laughs> Mix. that She's like trying to hide in the kitchen. Mm hmm. And they're on the back porch with like their little like white fang or whatever it was they had in their cans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, yeah, you're right. Like what horror isn't a manifestation of fucked up family values? Mm. Mm. Do you know what I mean? For like, sure. Yeah. I love it. I think it's great. I like it, that like you've got Freddy who is obviously like he is the villain and he's the one doing all the killing. But like there's so much more to it. Yeah. Like there's so much more than like meets the eye. Yeah, it's and it's the fact that like there was a regular kind of occurrence of the parents don't ever believe the kids, mm. and it's like, yes, who would believe that a demonic sleepy monster has tried to kill me? Yes, yeah. that's obviously a hard thing to kind of follow. But then when you have the scenes like the guy, uh, is it Rod that gets killed in the prison? Like she always gets proved right. Nancy's always correct that these things mm. are kind of actually happening, and nobody, no adult, even her dad, doesn't believe her, mm. and it's like. Just believe kids, man. Believe women, I guess. <laughs> you heard it right. here first. Yeah, this is so yeah. true. And it's it's such a trope, isn't it? Like if you're um, a hysterical like, woman yeah. as well. Yeah. And the more you say that you're not crazy, the more people are gonna think you're crazy. Mm -hmm. Um it's just like that sounds unreasonable. And no one, like you said, just believe her and you could have saved all this hassle. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Very true. Yeah, I definitely think because they'd have been so much more <clears throat> equipped so earlier on if her mum had been like, look what I've been hiding in the basement. <laughs> yeah. Knife glove. She kept that right. hidden. She'd been like, right. oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but as a child, knife marks. <laughs> as a child who rifled for presents, I'd have found them knife gloves within minutes. <laughs> You're a rifler, were you? As I'm a rifler. Oh. Still am. Yeah. Um, yeah, 100%. Like, I'd have been like straight down there. I'd have found that shit. I just don't feel like anyone you'd have known more about the fact that like there was a kid killer in town. Mm. Like I think you know like some level of basic history about where you live. Mm. You imagine me? I'd have like that always sunny in Philadelphia, like bored behind me, like <laughs> look what happened. Look at me, Shelby. <laughs> but like this, this is the thing. Like because I feel like, um, like the town I come from is not very big. So when there's like a murder or someone's even just killed, like everybody knows because it's in the local mm. news and everybody knows someone who knows someone who knows something that happened. Mm -hmm. So if you're that age and something so dreadful happened, I feel like you would know, like there'd still be like an echo of it. So they wouldn't have more knowledge of our Fred. Mm. Well, there is that kind of the nursery rhyme that goes on, like yeah. all the kids know it. So you could argue that kind of it is there from mm. a very early age and the parents just kind of repressed it as they got older. It's like yeah. ancestral memory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who made the nursery rhyme? I mean, that guy needs to go and have a chat with a therapist. He was probably Freddie himself when it'd been like, I need some I need something catchy. I, yeah, I need yeah. a theme tune for when I'm like going down the alleyways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I saw that Freddy Krueger had been voted, I think, completely undisputedly, one of the top 20 best villains in horror mm. of all mm. time. I think we can all agree that is completely well-deserved. I think he plays yeah, 14th. Yeah. 
Um, oh, that's a lot lower. Yeah, I, th- I, I, I was thought going to say because one of the questions I have for you guys was, would you consider him like the most iconic um, of the of the slashery killers, Ooh, and easily tough... and easily recognizable as a little addendum? Well, I mean, I posted a picture of me in this top on Instagram, and everyone was like, "Oh, Freddy Krueger!" I was like, <laughs> "He was green and red stripes." <laughs> <laughs> get it right but i think he is instantly you see the glove you see the hat you see the shirt and you're like oh you be dressing also freddy krueger but i think when you've got people like ghostface and you've got you just, it's all the masks man it's all I the masks, masks like, you know? i think really if you were to take ghostface and jason i mean he only gets his hockey mask in what the second one mm. second one yeah he so that's, nice that's already a bit of a lie but we'll allow it um <laughs> and michael myers yeah, yeah, uh, and Freddie. I think they gotta they gotta have like a tie for like the yeah. most recognizable because mm. I think like straight away you could pick him out in a lineup. Like you could pick out Freddie in like a silhouette because he's got such like a distinctive like mm. shape. <laughs> yes, with his claws <laughs> and his <laughs> hat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I probably Happy. argue for Ghostface is more recognizable when you see it, like because mm. that image has permeate like permeated through so many different kind of ways not yeah. just scream it's just like it's such a and scary movie as well so yeah played a big part with that i think yeah and it's I think that, yeah. sorry that just that kind of transcended kind of mm. the horror genre just became a recognizable oh that's a halloween thing now it's not mm. just a horror thing um but yeah i think freddie with the kind of with his color, color scheme and he's a bit more creative than just he's an axe man with a mask like he's just a bit yeah. more unique yeah to he's Freddy. so like whimsical as well and he's yeah. got a character he, he reminds does. me of like willy wonka meets a meets a slasher like he's, he's just <laughs> just oh i love him i love him so much. he's willy wonka if he'd had like a really bad bad childhood I think we can I agree think... Willy Wonka probably had a bad childhood. Yeah, I mean, like, them really kids on that boat. <laughs> like, um, well, they're like basically brothers, like borderline. There's some there's some things going on there. He killed some kids in he his killed factory. Kids, yeah. That's... And then God. Johnny Depp played him in the, the remake. So oh, I'm my word. Saying. Conspiracy! <laughs> yeah. So Freddy Krueger prequel. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. But um, I read that the makeup artist, David Miller, used. Um, it's really actually fucking grim pictures from UCLA hospital of like burns victims yeah. to make mm. Freddie's um, kind of his, to, to make his face, I suppose you'd say. Yeah. I think you can't talk about that without talking about the reliance in Hollywood upon facial disfigurement as a means yes. of creating a bad guy. Oh know? my God. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, um, I think fear the, fear the other fear. The, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, just so fed up of that. Like mm-hmm. I think, <laughs> There's definitely been a shift, but it's so recent, like in the last, like, what, four, five years where people have said, no, actually, like having a a scarred face or some sort of like, say, like anything disfigurement or disability or something doesn't equal the bad villain. Mm. Yeah, because there was backlash about the new Bond film as well, wasn't there? Because Jeremy Malik has got... um, I can't Any remember exactly. Yeah, it's, yeah, I know he's got yeah. scars, but I can't the remember. The problem I have with Remy Malik in that film is I still imagine him as the little prince in um, Night in the Museum. Night in the Museum. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. get back to the museum, lad. You can't be yeah. facing off. You, you just can't have a Bond villain now when you've had Mads Mikkelsen and expect me to care or respect them. 100%. That's a fair point. Now, yeah. Fair point. Uh, yeah, unless it's like Kate Blanchett. <gasps> <gasps> that, would, that would be good. <laughs> Could you imagine? Oh, yeah, I think that's like a big trope. Like, I was listening yeah. to one of them, um, one of my favorite podcasts the other day. Um, and it read Was it podcast. this one? It was this one, yeah. <laughs> um, and they're talking about how, um, it was an episode, it's like a true crime podcast. Um, yeah. red handed, if you listen to this, I love you. Um, <laughs> of like how it was about acid attacks and how this lady right. who was the victim very, very tragically of an acid attack tried to look on the internet for like how to do makeup on someone who's got burns but the only things you could find was people doing like how to do makeup to make it look like you've got burns yeah. mm-hmm. and it's like you never think about that kind no. of thing do you mm-hmm. ever and then no. it's just yeah it's so, not like the really simple things would like completely just change mm-hmm. forever yeah and i think like there is a reliance like you said we've definitely moved away from that kind of reliance on um like def- i don't want to say disfigurement but like on yeah you know, people with different features mm. being bad guys. 
Hmm. I think it's always like worth we said, mentioning. I think you coined it very well. It's like that fear of the other. Yeah. yeah. Like of what is not this, you know, the cookie cutter thing we've seen. Yeah, every what's day. not perceived as normal is seen yeah. as something to be feared of. Feared. Scared yeah. of? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, feared, a feared, a feared, feared, yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, there was a thing about that with the new um Assassin's Creed. Um, really, really early on, just after it had come out, there was um a conversation, and I can't quite remember the full details now. I'm sure it was from like, do you mean the film? Um, one? No, the game from the Valhalla, right? Um, character featured a, a scar from a burn like a, i think like a quite a severe like facial neck from like a house fire or something like that and there was like a comment that because of it they'd basically hidden their face for so long and someone just sort of said on twitter like as a person a who's had this like i just find that as a really outdated negative mm-hmm. attitude and like i'm just mm-hmm. trying to like i'm with me day and i don't yeah. need to see this and they were like do you know what? Fair play. We've been insensitive. We apologise. We've addressed it. We've changed it. We've taken it out. Yeah. I, fair play. I was like, do you know what? Yeah, fair play. Mm. I appreciate that. I mean, there was loads of like um, gammon lad comments afterwards, but who cares? Yeah, respect yeah. for that. I guess there is kind of, you could look at, if you compare like Freddy to people like, say, Jason, because Jason's got mm. a very fucked up face and he hides it with a mask because he's probably yeah. got kind of that shame or whatever whereas at least freddie kind of very vocally said like i've got to fuck the face lens who cares yeah. like he's very proud of that and yeah, yeah. Kind of, freddie's kind of like he wears his as like look what they have done yeah exactly to me yeah um i think jason's got like so many mummy issues like mm. he's, oh yeah he's hiding that behind that mask as well like <laughs> <laughs> that's very fair I think that speaks to the character of Freddy Krueger very well. Mm. well. Like you said, he's very like, look he's at me. So he's, whimsical. he's so dramatic. Oh, he? I yeah. just so love him. When you see him in that alleyway and he's got like big stretchy arms, mm. I was just like, what's happening here? <laughs> and then he's up? like, look what I can do. I'd like chop some fingers off. And I'm like, what? Sure. <laughs> you do you, man. <laughs> like, I don't know whether it's like... um because of like us watching it now versus when it would have first come out but as soon as he starts like having a little giggle i'm like i am completely disarmed like you said yesterday like nothing dispels that fear like laughing at it Mm. and it's almost like you're laughing at it because it is funny he's Mm. like a funny-ish sort of like bad guy um he's not as funny in the first as he is in later films though mm. yeah he gets more like campy whimsical yeah. as he goes on yeah. just bananas he's completely yeah. nuts yeah yeah but then it's nice to have a character that like is so chatty like yeah. someone who will do they're those kind of just brooding they're always yeah. quiet and brooding and following you with a big knife at least this guy <laughs> is like coming out your wall exactly yeah 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 Better personality well. about him yeah yeah, yeah, I think it's like mm. uh, it works very really well because obviously, like, he's in the dreams, and when you're in, when you're like dreaming, <clears throat> nothing's quite as it is mm. or as it should be. So he gets a lot of freedom to mm. kind of like change his shape and do all these funny little things because it, like, mm. it's perfectly logical in the illogicalness of a dream. I was going to say illogicability. I was like, that's not the right word. <laughs> yeah, I'm going with that. I like it, though. Thank you. Um, yeah, when, talk, we'll talk about the dreams in a minute. Um, I have one small comment. When they're at the dream clinic, mm-hmm. uh, or sleep clinic, or whatever it is, and Nancy's like, just going to sleep, and she's having like a writhe around or whatever, and her mum's talking to the doctor, and she's like, what are dreams? And it goes like, oh, there's some mind mojo. I was like, <laughs> you're a fucking doctor. You're telling me that's your answer? Like, I'd be like, unplug my child. We're going <laughs> elsewhere. You clearly know fuck all. You've got a picture on your wall of a cat in like a little tram having a great time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's mind. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, mind mojo? Like, what? Anyone who uses the word mojo in life in general is like, mm, bit sus. Yeah. A doctor alone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just like, that's not a good enough like, no. definition. 
We're looking for answers here, man. Yeah. People are being killed in their dreams. Like, You're working for Freddy. <laughs> Sorry that, yeah, sorry that. But I, 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 I love the concept. I think what you said really absolutely nails it. That he is kind of like supernatural, but not supernatural, but tangible, but dreamy. It just dreamy. blur those lines. Yes, mm. no, I know creepy way. And um, <laughs> and I just love the concept of kind of something coming into your dreams. Because mm. another little fact that I definitely don't only know from supernatural: yes. eleven days, eleven days is the longest consecutively yes. that humans can go without sleep mm-hmm. there is a reason that sleep deprivation is used as a form of torture because mm-hmm. it is horrific and i think that the concept of just that in and of itself like not being able to go to sleep is mm-hmm. a horrible concept for a lot of people yeah. without being like oh if i do go to sleep i'm just going to get killed mm. you know and i read that that um it was kind of loosely based very loosely at the time there was i've got it written down here um there were refugees mm. the Hmong refugees from cambodia and vietnam who fled to the us mm. um and they would they would go to sleep and a lot of people would like die shortly after and it was called asian death syndrome mm. which is not a great name Questionable in itself yeah no yeah but i think that as a phenomenon um I read somewhere was like a little bit of inspiration mm. as to the concept of okay what is happening in these people's dreams that mm. could be and that's so human isn't it mm. grasping for explanations <laughs> no matter yeah. how, how supernatural and bizarre they are for sure we need some explanation of the mind mojo yeah <laughs> we need more than that doctor <laughs> yeah i think that's what i liked about this film is that like the dream element is that when you go to sleep is your safe space isn't it like yes mm-hmm. nightmares are scary but when you go to sleep you know that nothing mm-hmm. can really kind of hurt you so the fact that they took that safety blanket away from you by making him mm-hmm. that's when literally he is at his most dangerous was really really clever um, yeah definitely yeah i think we've all kind of to look into kind of like the horror tropes and stuff we've all been conditioned to fear nighttime in horror mm-hmm. films and then when they can eventually when it's oh it's the daytime you know that like oh we're now in kind of the safe environment as much as we can whereas mm-hmm. In Elm Street, nighttime knows, oh, shit, the scares are coming. Yeah. But they're not even coming yet. They're coming even later into the night. And it's just like, oh, it really kind of plays with mm. your expectations of what a horror film is. And I really like that about it. Yeah, I think so. I like what you say, like daytime and nighttime, that cycle mm. is always so interesting in a horror film. Unless you have something, obviously, like uh, Midsummer, where they were just like, fuck you and your safety. Like that, right? yeah. Like, um, mm. But like you say, like we're we're definitely conditioned to fear the dark because, like, obviously in the dark you get the creatures that can't come out in the daytime. Um, you know, you can't always see. It's all that sort of like limited sort of like your, your senses are a bit more heightened, a bit more vulnerable. Um, and you're right. Like we're always told, like it doesn't matter what you dream about. Like none of it's real, so you'll be fine. So then for Wes Craven to be like, <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> here's this guy. Here's Georgie in a hat coming at you in your sleep. Like, <laughs> yeah, true fear, man. I think that's why it's like it stayed as so iconic. Because, like, what else redefined this sort of character, like, created this character and this concept? Like, what a visionary, man. I'm just like, mm. I love Wes Craven. I'm always Wes just like, incredible. Like, look at you, look at all the things you made. Like, this is it. Like, you can incredible. install alarm systems on your doors to stop ghost facey people. You can break yeah. up with your gaslighty, but admittedly incredibly hot boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, you know, you can you can take precautions. You can't not sleep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you can't do anything in your sleep to, like, particularly protect yourself unless you go mm. in for the concept of, like, lucid dreaming. But even then, that scares that's like, me in of itself. Yeah. I'm too scared to even that try that. That takes a lot of mastering. Um, mm. And once you've hit that, like sleep deprivation sort of <laughs> stage, like you haven't got the cognitive, like fourth one to even like get on that. No, I do like her attempt that when she kind of home alone's her house with like yeah. the yeah. sledgehammer and stuff and mm-hmm. the. The bomb light bulb, which was very clever. Yeah, yeah. Um, smart. <laughs> That's what I really like about Nancy, like as a character. Like she's a like a she's a doer. She's a gamer. Yeah. She's yeah. like, here's this plan. You boys are gonna do this, and they're just useless. Like they're really misogynistic mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. useless. Like all Glenn has to do is not go to sleep, mm. and he goes to sleep like five times, and you're like, Glenn. <laughs> 
you're pretty, but you're stupid. Yeah. It's like, we literally himbo. We said something similar, didn't we, about Scream in terms of Mm. Sydney being like, just a doer. She gets up, she knows what she's got to do. She's got the, you know, the balls to be like, Balls. Ironic, nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and Nancy's really similar. They're really proactive characters who aren't going to literally take all their fate lying down. They're going to do something about it. And I love that because... Lying down, I mean, by the way. Nice sleeping. I, 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 I'm going to pretend that that one was on purpose. The first one definitely was. That one was. <laughs> um, but I think that... Because you're so conditioned in horror films, aren't you, to have like, oh no, help me, I'm, I'm a lady. Oh no, yeah. I, I did a sex, I will die. And yeah. it's like... Oh, my virtues have been torn asunder. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and you've got these two, these two um, women who, mm. 1985, when was Scream? 1996 and seven, wasn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. May 2nd. Um, who <laughs> did pave the way for a lot of our yes. modern, powerful, kind of strong yeah. women in mm-hmm. horror, I think, yeah. for sure. Yeah, they're like what, it was almost like, um, Marion in Psycho had to had to die so that our girls could then like run, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I yeah. see that. I do like the final girl trope. I think in. in I was going to wear my with... t-shirt, but no. I oh, why did we do that? Why did we not ever wear the? Oh, anyway, um, <laughs> we always like. Oh, we should have put that t-shirt on. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm always like a little bit torn in terms of like the final girl because. Some of the older stuff to do with it, like I don't really like buy into, mm-hmm. but and I don't really I don't really like the sort of torture porn aspect of constantly seeing women having to no. fight for their entire lives. Yeah, but watching mm-hmm. something like Ready or Not and seeing Samara Weaving just absolutely like smashing the shit out of some Tories, I'm always like, yes, girl, <laughs> like Literally. go on. When she's sitting there having a cigarette at the end in a oh, little, sh- oh, little chunk. That is class. Like, yeah. wah. Yeah. They, they, they created a Oscar new worthy. Halloween costume for... We said that, didn't come. we? We said yeah. that we literally the second we'd finished that film, we were like, yep, yeah, that's it. Horror. That's Halloween for like a thousand girls right there. Absolutely. Or guys. Or whoever. It's it's not whoever's you want. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone can wear that. Um, yeah, definitely. And like, if... We could have a little bit less of the sort of torture aspect and more of just mm. the being boss. That would mm. be fine. The new wrong turn <clears throat> has an yeah. interesting um, take on it. I've not seen it yet, but I've I mean, heard mixed you, reviews. You told me Ooh. it was a bit like I liked it in because ter- I, I liked it because it was it was nothing like it's predecessor series yeah because it is a reboot i had to look it up for when i was writing my review about it because i was like why we've gone very off topic sorry sorry everybody we will come back i'm sure um georgie will segue us back I, well, yeah you queen. keep going i'll, I'll think <laughs> yeah, yeah. um but the the main character um she goes on this hiking trip with a group of friends um her boyfriend awful again um and that's a they, regular Trope yeah, films is the and I don't really want to give it. Much, I don't want to give any of it away because it is so brand new, and it's not. I don't actually think it's even streaming yet, or it might have just started streaming. Mm. Um, but there's a few. There's a few events where you think, "Oh, right, okay." But then she turns it around quite well every time, and you're like, "Hmm." But again, a lot of pain, a lot of torture along yeah. the way. That's it. But so you know resilience. When you, well, yeah, so capable women and useless men, Ba-doo! I think is a very, very important thing nice. in that kind of rejig of horror. And I yes. think that there's so many iconic shots in this film that can kind of represent that. I mean, everybody knows the scene in the bath. Everybody knows that. Yeah. And that, again, speaking of like someone really, really strong and really, you know, a doer, <laughs> You're most vulnerable when you're asleep and when you're in the bathroom. Yeah, I've said this before. More frightening than, <laughs> it's literally than, my worst yeah. nightmare. The you don't want to be bathroom. like naked and afraid and like, mm-hmm. yeah. Right. And I think that that kind of dealing of how they address like relationships and power dynamics in relationships is really, really interesting because you get it mm. again in Scream. Where's Craven? <laughs> I'm sure that applause means as much to you as your many, many accolades. Yeah. But um, I think the kind of <laughs> power 
power dynamic that you see in these relationships, especially in, oh God, I'm going to sound so old, kids of this age, you know, like (laughs) high school kids. That is just a really, really fun thing because it's like coming of age meets horror. And I, Mm I love that. I love it so much. Yeah, he definitely like enjoys the sort of subverting like you say like the tropes and the relationships and the, and mm. the power dynamics that we've seen before mm. um and always like they're always like quite a nice mixture of kids as well like it's not just like a gang of cheerleaders and they're like mm-hmm. sporty boyfriends or like a team of nerds they're all like a big mixture and i'm always like mm. yeah. yeah yeah i do like how they kind of play with that whole idea of the final girl as well with like not to go kind of from the first one, but the second one mm. when you've got um is it jesse is that his name um it was like i think they, they call him the first male screen queen i think and they kind mm. of played at the whole yeah uh, you're always le- you're always leering at the female characters in horror films and yet here's this kid in his tighty white he's in his bedroom kind of and it kind of it just flipped down its head and that's what i think big old wes does that really really well in his films that he just he likes to play with the expectations and the tropes and he really just likes to analyze what are we doing here why are we why is it always in this way why mm. not switch things up and i think yeah i think nancy really embodies that really well and i think she definitely inspired lots of future mm. characters like like you said sam weaving in you want and, um ready or not or was it erin in your next i think she was, yeah. that was the character oh, like that kind of film. Yeah. great film and mm. i think yeah just i do like the the way that they got using women and using also kids are kind of giving them that power mm. um to kind of be the hero for a change. Yeah. Uh, and like what you're saying, that's beautiful. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And what you're saying as well, like I definitely feel like Johnny Depp was like the eye candy in this film. Like he was. With his crop top. And Larry George, has been dying (laughs) to talk about Johnny and his crop top. Look, okay. Which also you might recognise from Sabrina when Ross Lynch had his Yes, he did. I think I aggressively texted you that at one point. The new new Netflix one? Yeah. Yeah. Not the classic 90s. No. So tragically, no. Um, Although there was a beautiful little homage to that at the end of the last series of Sabrina. I've not watched the last series yet. yet. Enchanting. Wait till you see Salem as puppet Salem. You will lose your shit. Um... (laughs) Yeah, there was a there was a point. I'm sure it was like season two. Mm-hmm. Um, he's literally like on his bed, on his bed, listening to top. records with his little crop top on. Mm. Bring back boy crop tops. Bing, yeah, <laughs> my word. Bing, stop. <laughs> Bing. Bing. <laughs> Boys need to wear crop tops. You need to grow your hair. Out. I'm wearing one now. I'm joking. I'm not. I'm not. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> everyone, everyone. Let's make 2021 crop tops for all. This is it because like. Everyone should wear them. And like mm-hmm. men have this thing where like I can't wear that. That's too feminine. Grow up, wear it. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. It, oh. Clothes have oh. no gender. That is a myth. Thank you. Clothes yeah. are literally fabric. True. We've gone on strange tangents. We have because Johnny, we talk about Johnny Depp still technically. Yeah. His great it's also, hair. It's yeah. also one of those things where nobody can look at that scene when he's on his bed being like, he doesn't look good there. Like he yeah. legitimately just looks class. Yeah, yeah like, well, it transcends you know. sexuality. That's yeah, it. who does not want to look like '80s Johnny Depp? I don't think anyone doesn't. So, no. I would. Yeah. I'd like mm-hmm. to look like that. That'd be boss. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that it was. I watched. Oh, I can't remember what it was. It was. I think it was. It was on Shudder, and it was a documentary. I love documentaries, and if you've not watched the documentaries, are on Shudder. They're so good. Mm. They're really, really, really good. Um, obviously they've got great films, but like. I've got lots of like making of documentaries and like the history of horror and stuff. Um, and they do podcasts too. Really, really good. Um, again, I'm sure they need that plug from me. But, um, <laughs> hashtag ad. Hashtag. Yeah. yeah. Pay promotion. Um, <laughs> there was one I watched on there and one of the people on the set was like, you've got these, these characters who are two of like the most beautiful people in mm. Hollywood, like the most gorgeous kids. That sounds so weird, but like, yeah. the, the, you know what I mean? Like the young people who are like, okay, yeah. you guys are the up and comers kind of thing. You guys yeah. are the faces mm-hmm. in Heather Langenkamp and then Johnny Depp. And I think it just adds to that aesthetic. It's so 80s and it gives mm. you that kind of nostalgia. I wasn't alive in the 80s. I wish I was, mm. but you're like, yes, you just know it instantly. It's instantly mm. recognizable, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I love that. Yeah. I think as well, like the soundtrack and the score and stuff like feeds into that because it's so yeah. immensely 80s. Mm-hmm. Synthy and 
Yes. Yeah. So different yeah. from like we were talking about. Like I said we were talking about mm. Scream last time. Um, and they're such wildly different scores. Like the Freddy um, sort of nightmare score is just like all over the show constantly. Mm. It's just yeah. like here's some synth, there's a bit of this, there's a bit of that. Like it's always something going on, and I love that. I think that yeah. works really, really well. I will say I can't. If you if someone told me to kind of sing the night with Freddy theme, I probably couldn't do it. Whereas no. I could sing the Michael Myers Halloween theme. Yes, like, I definitely don't. Do you want to do that right now? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> this is I liked it. Four Cheers. out of seven. <laughs> um, I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> I I definitely think you're right. Like I, I'm I'm thinking about it now, and I definitely couldn't tell you like if he has a synonymous theme mm. other than his little nursery rhyme yeah i was gonna say that's probably yeah the freddy thing is the nursery rhyme yeah. rather than any kind of oral 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 motif oral yeah Ooh, oral motif, motifs. Yeah. Like definitely that. a language teacher that, that is a sentence <laughs> that took me straight back to a level yeah. film studies um you're welcome. yeah yeah i definitely think you're right um Definitely, I love it. It's just everything about it's immediately, you know, noticeable. Noticeable? Yeah. What? No, recognizable. Like recognizable. Thank mm-hmm. you. Um, I I think it's fantastic. I would put it up there. I will be so bold Ooh. as one of the greatest horror films ever made. Um, mm-hmm. I think you say this every week. I do, <laughs> but this one especially. I mean, um, this is the classics in conversation for a reason, is. isn't it? It is. Sure. So I'm alive. Yeah. Um, I think but this is going to sound like okay. I know how film Twitter are going to get about this show. So Ooh. if you put this next to Psycho, what would you, would you rather watch? Yeah, would be off Hitchcock. This is so much better. Yeah. Clip that. You can use that as your uh, <laughs> as your thing. Whoa. Whoa. I Psy- mean, Psycho. Of... Psycho walks so Elm Street can <clears throat> run. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 And you yeah. know what? It, it did better. Did better for it. Don't get me wrong. I understand. I understand the need for. Georgie's had a fiery beans this morning. This is why we don't do it in the mornings. I've told you. You've got to have it after work. So I'm like beaten down and There's exhausted. Yeah. I understand. I understand the need for predecessors yeah. because obviously. There's all those people saying you can't enjoy modern film if you don't enjoy old. Oh. That's bullshit. Yeah, it's not black and white. Yeah. Back. Oh god literally um <laughs> it's just so frustrating i understand that there are references and there are techniques and there are nods to things that might not be fully appreciated but to turn around and say oh you're going to think it's original and that makes you look stupid no, no. at the end of the day films about like enjoyability and this is a film that mm. in 1984 and 5 has come out that i can still enjoy in 2021 yeah and still kind of get my teeth into get scared by Mm-hmm. And I just, I just, I think it's fantastic, and I would rather watch this than Psycho. So as Alfred, <laughs> big up Alfred. He's turning in his grave. Yeah, hit that, Freddy. <laughs> we've not even, we've not really talked about how scary the film is because it is fucking scary. It is. Like, yeah. It's like yeah. funny and whimsical, but it's scary. Mm. There's also, some really like, creepy bits. Really of it. violent as well. Yeah, I was. I watched when I watched it again this week. Like the one that I always remember the scene when Johnny Depp gets. Yes. sucked into the bed and the whole fountain yes. of blood and stuff looks class iconic whatever but the one that really freaks me out is tina's death when she's flown like around the yeah. room around the room like yeah. that's so creepy yeah. and mm-hmm. there's so much blood in it and he's just like this is insane yeah. and it's just really unsettling that whole thing and i think it what what the whole series does with the films i've seen it does do really creative deaths and really creative yes. kills. Yeah. And I think that kind of then you could argue pioneered the way for things like Saw. Final Destination mm. and Saw and like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, because, you know, they do with dreams, you have the ability to do literally wherever you want. So yes, she can now fly around the room and Freddie's yeah. chucking her around and yeah. But that death in particular really kind of stuck with me as being like, oh, this is really fucked up. Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think you've touched on a really good point there. Cause like, if you look at that, that death in particular with Tina, Mm. and you look at like say going ahead of like before that with like the exorcist yeah and then you have say that death and then that allows for the films like saw for example or like hostel or whatever that are all you know way more of a sort of like event horror than like a 
enjoyable film mm-hmm. um you know and that i think like you say it's gone from being something that almost is only doable in in someone's dream world um to being like there's a lot more capability now because like Wes Craven unleashed that on the world so mm-hmm. it's his fault that these films exist <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah like you know i have an issue with like pia like piago go like visceral torture porn like i i like i think like a horror comedy might actually be my favorite genre like it's it's funny and enjoyable because like it is such an enjoyable film which is such a weird thing to say when you think about everything Mm. that happens in it Mm. and like you said with um with the flinging around the roomy death that instilled something in me like (laughs) the, the the one one horror film that i just can't it stuck with me so it's paranormal activity okay shut mm-hmm. up i know i get it but it, <laughs> I, it just oh my god it's harrowing yeah. and that i think it's like you said in dreams whilst you can do anything you also have literally no control over what happens yeah. at all and so she's being flung around like this and that really does link into what we were saying before like vengeful vengeful spirit and possession type thing yeah you don't have any control even if you wanted to stop that yeah. you can't mm. you know and i think that's that just that's scary without being flung around the room or sucked into a bed you know yes also i think as well um love that practical uh, practical effect life like oh yeah yeah for sure we say this every single week and um i will die on this hill like practical effects over cg anytime mm-hmm. like the fact that you know for glenn's death the bed scene that, that reese was talking about earlier um they built that set upside down so that they could pour mm. 80 gallons of red liquid. That out, is sick. Right? That, just that one concept to mm. me as like a film fan and, and a former student of film just like makes my heart full. Like I said to Georgie, I say this to Georgie like every time I speak to it, that like I'd lo- I want to be like a prop builder and I wish I'd have been alive in the 80s to be a prop builder. Because mm. that sort of like engineering um ingenuity sort of like just the creativity that went into like creating all the things like it wasn't tina's cgi body that was getting flung around yeah it was like uh, yeah yeah and it's incredible and i'm always just like i think that is a lot of why these films that we've been talking about like i revere them so much because i'm Mm. like the craft that went Mm. in yeah like i have like a super deep respect for yeah, I saw. I was reading a little bit about Nancy in the bath. <laughs> Resident pervert again. <laughs> Resident cool. pervert has um, checked in. <laughs> so the, the how the set was constructed for yeah. it. So she was in the bath, sat on a bit of like plywood, mm. and then the rest of the bath, like the the, the latter half where the hand comes up. <laughs> I hope everyone who's watching the YouTube videos is enjoying these visuals. Yes, I like the demonstration. <laughs> um, and it was like sunken down, just massive. Can you please get a few knives and just like yeah, <laughs> just with my pens, like. Okay, that's cool. um, and it was kind of like half of a bath and sunken mm. down into a massive pool where someone was kind of like peeking, peeking out. And wow. like you said, that that practical nature, you, yeah. you just CGI Love that it. in, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. You, you know really... what else does that really well? No, not to kind of. Oh, gone. The Mandalorian. Baby Yoda would not have been that cute, that adorable no. if he was CGI. Yeah, he needs to be an actual tangible thing. Yeah. Um, but I think what well, that's what I really like about the 80s. <laughs> and... Judge, he stole oh. him. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do like, like you said, about the ingenuity and stuff, in that compared to today, yeah. CGI is now seen as like a, a fallback crutch. You can just kind of rely on it. Yes. Yeah. And, and obviously, it, sure. like, there's still an incredible amount of work that goes into CG. And Absolutely. it's like ever changing. And I'm always baffled at its capabilities. But when it comes to horror, for me personally, I just like me a proper monster. Yeah. That, you know <laughs> has to be wheeled in or whatever like that that's the height of real sort of like mm. craftsman cinema for me yeah we spoke about it. it in jaws didn't we with with yes. um, the wonderful sarah we were like little brucey boy mm-hmm. is so enduring. The little brucey boy is 25 feet long he's he, don't, don't get me started on my shark <laughs> tirade again <Yeah>. um <laughs> and he's he still stands up because i think yeah. you i can't remember if it was you or sarah who said it that is 75, 1975, yeah. that film. And if it was CGI ages the day after the film comes out. Yeah. Whereas yeah. that practicality, yeah. timeless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Still scary today, Jules. 
Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. And if like, you haven't listened to that episode, please feel free to go back and check it out. Really I watched it yesterday. It's very good. Ah, oh, bless, bless you. you. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Like I love practical stuff. I love practical effects. Um, I think as well. Sorry to jump on like, the no, practicality thing. Jump on it. Like jump. with like the um, the Johnny Depp death. Mm. Like you can't get that viscosity of the Lovely. blood right yeah. without doing it practically. And also, like, the fact you said it was upside down, now it makes perfect sense, perfect of course sense. they did. But at the time, I did not understand how yeah. they did that. So that has really scratched that itch in my mind. Um, but any kind of blood in general on a film always has to be kind of done practically. Like, the new um, Evil Dead remake from, like, 2013, I think it was. Mm. That, like, final scene, I think, is the most bloody film I have ever seen See, in my entire now, life. I remember the trailer for that coming out. Mm. Um, and I was shocked at how violent oh, it was alone in the trailer. so brutal. Um, and I actually have to admit, I haven't seen the remake yet. It's honestly, um, it's really good. And I hear nothing but amazing things about mm. it. I actually think I might watch that later on. I really After recommend I've done it. this week's one division. Like, es- um, like especially kind of in in that like, the last like the final act of it is basically yeah. it starts spoilers it starts raining blood effectively. I won't bother now, Reese. You just put it spoil it. But it, it's all done like legitimately, yeah. and like the final shot is, is just I won't spoil the shot because oh my god, it's class. Yeah. But it's, kind of, <laughs> it's just the way I mean, that I've seen the original. So all the like, blood is just like. Yeah. Boof, like all there. Well, this and is you the thing. Just, it's like, like um, you've got like the descent, and I always use the descent as like yeah. my point of reference for like an incredible horror film because also it's British, so like, yeah, yeah. yeah. preach. Um, but that was like incredible for the fact that it was filmed like on location in caves, and then mm-hmm. when they were like, oh, actually, now we're getting stuck, they built the yeah. whole set at like pine woods and like built some tunnels. Mm. And all those creatures are like men in suits, and they look terrifying. Like, it's terrifying. They, do. they really do. It's so they? terrifying. And that bit when she comes out of the bloody pool, <laughs> just masterful. And I loved it when they redid it in Tomb Raider as well. That was also amazing. Did you um, see as a random tangent? Did you see the cave? Uh, there was like a Descent Twelve A version. No. Yes. Oh man, it's so weird. Yes, it's I terrible. Think I, do know what you I remember mean. watching the cinema and thinking yeah. at the time because I was like probably about twelve or thirteen, thinking this is so scary. It's like the Descent, but worse. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> on another tangent, my dad watched the Descent and um, he had nightmares for about a week. It's really scary. It's That's really it. scary. <laughs> yeah. And it I remember terrible. I got into a visceral argument with my uni flatmate when I when we yes. first watched it because. I guess I'm spoiling lots of films here. We had a discussion about whether the ending scene was a dream or not. Ah, um, okay. And I was convinced that obviously it was a dream, but she wasn't. And we mm. got into like genuine kind of a proper slanging match. Like, did you that? see which ending? Did you watch the American um, or the UK version? It was. Yeah, I think it was the UK one. It was the one when she the bad um, the bad ending. Spoilers well, it was, it incoming. Was, it made a spoilers for the end. Yeah, of the I mean, the Christ, it's been out for years. It's so. a fifteen-year-old film. But, yeah. Um, it's the the one where there's a point when she gets into a car and there's like a whole crash and stuff, but then mm-hmm. it goes back into the cave and she's like lit a fire yeah. in, in the cave. Is that the good one or the bad one? That's the one where she actually is uh, still stuck. Yeah. The, yeah. the U S I think wrapped up with her, like driving off in a car. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah, the UK one added on the bit where she's actually, no, that was just her. Yeah. I love, I love that. I love mm. a bait and switch. They do it in um, 47 Meters Down, which we talked about last week as Literally well. Literally was about to say yeah. that, yeah, yeah. I was like, that. I'm a to really those good. words. Yeah, heard it's, it's good. so good. I do like a good shark um, film, like The Shallows. Yes, yeah. love that too. Well, not too, we'll not talk about that anymore, so you can experience mm. that in yourself. Because cool. <laughs> that's not that old, so I won't ruin it. But that is really good. Love yeah. Bad endings, man. We say that every week too. I love a bad ending. Yes, we like, do say this. Every be time. miserable. Have everyone die. Have <laughs> everyone stay stuck. Sometimes, like with Bill, Ready or David Not, Kessler. Love of my yeah. life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like Ready or Not, you you need her to survive at the end because you've been there with her throughout the whole thing, and she deserves to survive because yeah. she's not done anything wrong. She's just mm. been subject to like getting in with a Tory boy which I mean okay there's a moral to that film so uh take that as you will um and like obviously we want her to survive and she's like a boss ass bitch and we're all thrilled but like some films yeah I'm happy I'm happy for like everybody to die that's that's fine Mm -hmm. no big 
And I think this one, this is one where and like Scream, like they deserve their victory. They earn yeah, their victory. Definitely. You know? They definitely earn it as well as not just from being like chosen. They like hustled for it. Like um, oh, yeah. our girl Jamie in Halloween. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whose actual, his character name, I suddenly can't remember. Laurie Strode. Thank you, yes. I wouldn't have got that one, then, Georgie. Yeah, it was. Well <laughs> I love her. <laughs> yeah, yeah for, sure. for sure. Um, I think we've kind of covered everything that we were going to cover. Unless there's anything you want to mention, Georgie? I mean, I could have, we could have spent longer on the whole crop top thing, but I get what we've got on limited <laughs> time. Um, I think... No, just apart from the fact it's a masterpiece, and if you haven't watched it, please, I beg of you, if you, if you, okay, if you only watch one film out of all the films that we have discussed, watch Science of the Lambs. Spin that off. Back to the future. Um, but, no. To be fair, that's coming in the net. We're doing more classics, and you know you're going to be on for the Back to the Future. Yes. Um, and we? yes, we are. Sci-fi, <laughs> and then yeah. we. I think I to go against, even though. I love American Werewolf in London. I love so many of them. I think if I was going to say watch one of them, it'd be this or Scream. To be fair, mm. I I, um, I definitely sorry think, have like <laughs> when we. I just I'm ignoring you. When we're done, <laughs> we could do like a little watch party for like we'll get everybody to vote on which one they like the most, and we could yeah. do like a big watch along. That'd be cute. That'd be really That'd cool. Be fun. Um, yeah, okay, let's do the comments. The comments from the community. Georgie knows what's coming. <laughs> uh, so, Ben from X Geeks uh, wrote a beautiful little reason why he loves um, A Nightmare on Elm Street. He said it's a genre defining horror movie that not only gave us one of the most iconic horror antagonists of all time, but it also gave us one of the most progressive for the time and respons- responsive final girls in Nancy. Yeah, mm-hmm. 100%. Uh, the duo was the cherry on the top of a sickly, terrifying horror cake. Fucking love it. Perfect. <laughs> yes, that's love perfect. that. So beautifully summed up. Uh, and resident yeah. pervert Georgie Broad said she loves it because of soft boys and crop tops is her religion. <laughs> that's what I said. Yeah. She's getting reported and blocked off. That should be a crop top, shouldn't it? Soft boys and crop tops should just be like an actual t-shirt. Yeah, that would be so good. (laughs) I did see somewhere soon the t-shirt of the um, non-threatening boys magazine cover from The Simpsons. And I was like, I need that. I need that so much. Yeah. Yeah. Incredibly progressive. Incredibly fantastic. Deals with so much in so little time. Mm. Fantastic. For sure. And it stands the test of time, I think, is the... Bingo, bango. Definitely. Because even though it's, what, 36, 35 years old at this point, like it's still good, good. Maths. thank you and it's yeah it still looks great like i watched it this week and it still looks yeah. wicked it does apart, I, mean, I mean the long arms i could give or take the long arms yeah but apart from that it's really good everything else was great <laughs> yeah so that's been us this has been a nightmare on elm street uh thank you reese for joining us you've been a delight as always anytime thank you very much for having me uh where can the folks at home find you if they want to keep up with what you're up to um, my very chaotic Twitter feed is at Rupperger. Um, try and spell it if you can't. Don't worry about it. Um, I'll pop and, links uh, in the uh, <laughs> in the description so you can Thanks. find them. Um, and I do my kind of my main kind of business over at JumpCutOnline.co.uk, where I've written lots of stuff and I'm writing a kind of one division recap every week for the site. So if you want to go and check nice. that out, please do so. Um, but yeah, thank you guys. I really enjoyed this. It's been really really good. Ah, oh, you're Aww. welcome. And it's always it's good to talk to, talk to you, buddy. Yeah. yeah, anytime. I want. I'm. You've you said it now. I'm back for Back to the Future. Oh yeah, well, yeah, we're doing a whole extra. <laughs> By the way, Heb, we'll talk about it in a minute. Yeah, we're doing a whole extra one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me yeah. get the calendar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay. Um, and we'll see you guys next time. For I am actually going to consult my calendar. Uh, oh, it's in March. It's not on my wall. I can't it see. It is Poltergeist. Ooh. with a, another special guest so we will see you then for some spooky spooky times cool. alright be safe be good bye bye <laughs>